All right, so now we're into the third and last video of our three-part series um, on how to create models in Ads You Saw PhotoScan. So in this final video, I'm going to show you how to mask out um, putty and make a nice texture for our model. Um, and then finally, how to create a scale using markers in PhotoScan. Um, and we can either do that from our photos or from looking at our model. Okay, so bringing back our projectile point model, um, I'm first going to show you what happens if we just tell it to build texture uh, without m doing any masking. So remember we have, if we look over here, uh, photos from the point facing both down uh, and up. So if we look at one of the photos, right, we have putty. And what it's going to do uh, when we just say build texture um, is it's going to try to draw from all of these photos. And some of those, uh, we have areas of the model that are actually concealed by the putty. So what we're going to end up with, if I'm correct, uh, is sort of these gray cloudy things on both uh, the top and the bottom of the point. All right, so let's just let this go for a sec. All right, it's going to finish up here. All right, now up here we can click this uh, icon, which will show the texture. And here we are. So we have gray clouds where the putty is, um, which looks kind of cool, uh, but it's probably not what we want in our finished model. So how can we fix this? Um, basically, what we're going to do is add to the layer masks we had before. So again, right, all this stuff outside the white uh, is being masked. Um, and so by selecting, uh, I usually just use the rectangular select tool, drag around that putty, and then use control shift A to add that um, to the selection. Right? We're telling it to ignore when it creates the texture, that putty part. Um, but right, we've got like 90 photos here, or 80 photos, uh, and it doesn't actually need that many photos to create a nice texture. So usually what I do is, if I've got two columns of photos, I'll just click and drag down, okay, and then just disable those cameras. So it's just going to ignore those photos, and that means we don't actually have to mask the putty uh, right in every single photo, which might take a while. Let's just go through, and I don't worry about being too precise with this, um, since it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, if our scale is blocked out. All right, so this generally takes a few minutes. Um, so I'm just going to pause the recording, uh, and I'll come back to you once I'm done with this. OK, so I've gone and masked that uh, putty out in all of these. Um, again, I've you know, you can use these other selection tools to be a bit more precise about it. Um, but quick and dirty is usually pretty good. And if we look in the sort of silhouette view, uh, of those masks, we see the ones on the right, all are disabled. The ones on the left, we have these boxes uh, around the putty. So now let's go back to our model and run that build texture step one more time. And again here, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. All right, almost done. And what should happen now is these Areas should disappear, just like that. All right, so now we've got a model. It's got pretty nice texture on it. Um, and again, uh, just in case I didn't say for that build texture step, um, I do like the blending mode average, um, since it generally blends things uh, together better, and you get um, sort of fewer issues with shininess um, and reflection. OK. So now we have one final step, and that is to scale the model. So you can either do this from the photos uh, or from the model itself. And again, we're going to use markers for this. So I'm just going to take the region off. Ooh, oh, that's why. Um, just so we get a better view. All right, so now if we look at our scale here and zoom in, so this is the problem with average is sometimes things don't completely 
line up great. Um, if we look at the texture, if we turn it on to shaded, however, uh, and this is right, just putting colors essentially onto the polygons, um, it actually lines up a bit better. So I'm going to use this because it's still pretty darn precise. And if I zoom in, and I'm going to put a marker at this intersection um, between these two parts. And another trick here is if you can't quite zoom in as much as you want, if you right click and say center view, it'll zoom in for you. Sometimes it works a little better than that. Um, so just try to find, and you can turn your texture on, and eh, it's probably not going to help much. Um, and just say that's about the center of where those cross, and say create marker. All right, so that's point one. Oh, and we want to click here so we can actually see the markers uh, on our model. Let's go over to this side and do the same thing. And again, this is not the most uh, clear, but you know that's still pretty good considering each box is one millimeter there. And so when we zoom out, right, it looks not so bad. Um, and so now let's click one of these selection tools. So I'm going to click point two or point one order doesn't really matter here. Uh, hold down control so I can select and now you can see both of these are red. Then I'm going to right click and say create scale bar. So here we have scale one. Now here in the scale bar uh, pane and oh yeah if any of these panes are missing you go workflow or I'm sorry let's see view panes and then just click them on and off. Oh. But we've got it here so we're good. Anyway let's click on that scale and it automatically is going to assign your model an arbitrary size. Um, so don't worry about this error being off right now. But now we're going to tell it exactly how far this is. So in this case, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 centimeters. So it's saying the distance in meters. So let's say 0 0.08 and plus press Enter. Uh, and then it's still showing error because we haven't actually told it that that's what we actually want it to be. And to do that, we're going to click this, which is update. And now, right, we have the correct scale on our model. Okay, so that's how you do it uh, on the model itself. And the other option is to do it from the photos here. So to do it from the photos, right, we've got orange and green. Let's turn it so we can actually see these. Um, what you're going to want to do is find a photo like this guy, oh, where it's from a pretty high angle. And in this case, you can actually see 0.2, 0 0.1 0 is off here. Um, but if we zoom in real close, so we have this intersection just on the other side. And I'm going to create a new marker. In this case, it's 0.3. Zoom in over here, create a new marker at that intersection. Um, and that's going to be 0.4. Uh, and because these are green flags right um, versus the blue flag. So it hasn't actually put 0.3 and 4. It hasn't figured out where that is on um, other, you know, uh, photos yet. But if we go to another photo, again, looking for, we want both orange and green there. Oh, almost. Whoop. Let's see. Sometimes you got to snoop around a bit. Oh, not quite. Let's see. All right, let's figure it out, 0.3 and 4, 0.3 and 4. Okay, so since it's on these other photos, actually, let's just take a look here. Um, we can do the same thing. So let's select points 3 and 4, uh, which actually sometimes, yep, it's going to put those on our model as well because um, it knows where they are. And then you can select those two or select them here. Uh, right click and create scale bar. That's also 0 0.08. Um, so you can see we're off very ever so slightly. So uh, if we think of this as centimeters, this is millimeters. So we're off by maybe like a tenth of a millimeter, which is pretty darn small, um, I would say. Uh, and anyway, we could then again just click that rescale thing. Um, and now it's using uh, this scale bar 2 instead of scale bar 1. All right, so that's it. Um, those are the two ways you can scale your model, either from the model itself uh, or from the photos. So once you've got everything like you want it, 
final thing is, right, you're going to maybe want to use this model in other programs. Um, so the last thing to do is export this uh, model. And all we do for that is file export model. Let's just save it on the desktop. Um, and you're probably going to want to save this as a wavefront OBJ. That's normally what we use. Uh, and now it's going to give some options. Um, you can leave these uh, shift. I, and then you have vertex normals and export texture. Uh, I'm going to have both of those. All right. Uh, you can choose you know, what type uh, of file that texture is saved as. And I usually go with a JPEG, which is fine. And then just say OK. And it's going to save that model and our scale should be correct. All right, and let's just for fun, I'm going to open up another program, which is Mesh Lab. Come on. And I'm just going to bring our, just click and drag that file in, just to show that we've correctly exported it. All right, and there you go. Okay, so that's the uh, end of this video tutorial series. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. All right, bye.